rumors of the print business demise may be a little premature. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. I, I just want to do this. I just, you know, I, I, just, I, I don't do this anymore. I, I just, I, 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 I just want to do this. Oh my goodness, there's still a lot of you that do this. I know that, and especially on Sunday mornings or whatever. But you just, what, you just, you need to do this from time to time. In the old days, I will tell you, before I introduce my terrific guest, in the old days, I used to go into the radio study. I, I never thought I'd get to the point where I'd be talking about the old days, but thank God I have, right? So the old days, I, you'd have so many of these tucked under your arm to do a radio show, and then you would cut and you would clip and you would paste and you'd have, you'd have newspaper stories like on the microphone here and on the monitor over here and, you know, highlight here. And, and now it's, you know, it's down to, to this, you know, the printing of, of the stuff, scripts and otherwise. But really, it's really on my monitor or it's, it's, it's on my phone right here. And that's where the platforms have changed. But for the most part, the, the content needs to be the same. It, not, it hasn't necessarily kept up with the changes in the business, and I think we need to talk about that. Great to have you in on this Friday evening. Uh, I'm serious. I, I just was looking up these newspapers. On my, I just wanted to like, kind of wrap them around me because, uh, man, the business is, is needed. Anybody that tells you that the newspaper business um, is no longer needed is crazy. So we are going to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, not necessarily the Providence Journal, but... Uh, the locals and where they've carved out a niche that I think actually has an opportunity to grow, not recede. Here's a headline or a picture of the Warwick Beacon online. Now, <clears throat> every newspaper, I've had this little thing in my throat, so pardon me, but every one of these now needs one of those. You, right, John? That's right. You, you, we do. You need, you need, to, you need to be multi-platform in order to survive, but... There's still plenty of these that are being sold, correct? Thankfully, yes. John Howell is the publisher of Beacon Communications, and uh, another one of those guys that uh, has been on my list uh, to bring in and not only touches base on the business side of this business, but also his editorial uh, prowess because he's well known for that. Congratulations. You've got a new uh, project going on here. You've acquired the reminder, correct? That's right. Uh, the paper, the reminder, <coughs> is Excuse me. 63 years old and uh, was started as a, as a shopper, still is a shopper, uh, direct mailed right now to uh, more than 25,000 people in Coventry, West Warwick, West Greenwich, Exeter. So uh, it's got a footprint. Uh, and the amazing thing, uh, there are still people that walk into the office to place their classified ads, uh, ask the journal about that. They seem to have forgotten what classifieds are. Right. Uh, and there are people that are uh, putting in notices about their events, their nonprofits, what's going on in the community, uh, you know, sign-ups for little leagues, all of that sort of local stuff right. that is really hometown. <coughs> hometown, yeah. And we're going to meet the reminder owner and, and, and talk about the merger uh, and what it means coming up in, a, in the next couple of segments. You're a veteran of this business. You've seen it. You've seen a lot of things. Tell me about the history of your ownership of, of this, uh, of the Warwick Beacon, and, and, and your subsidiaries, and where you've been, where you are, where you're going. Uh, well, I'll try to make it brief. It's obviously a long story, yeah. but uh, in 1968, I moved to the state to uh, edit the East Providence Post, and uh, met a fellow there who was selling advertising. He was a sales rep by the name of Tony Bertanko. And I quickly realized what we were doing is everything. Uh, writing the stories, taking the photographs, doing the layout. Somebody didn't get their paper. <coughs> you ran out and de delivered it. Uh, somebody came in with a classified. You obviously took that. And uh, Tony was aware of the beacon that was for sale. We formed a company. Uh, we raised $40,000 between us on the sale of stock and started and bought the beacon. 
And we then started a number of other papers. Uh, in the course of three or four years, we started a paper in Seekonk, one in Newport, which still runs down there. Newport this week uh, was one of those. Acquired the paper in Cranston, started a paper in Coventry, started a printing company, and yet had time to have kids <laughs> and a family, which I wonder. But, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, so it's grown. Uh, and as you probably uh, can tell, I'm a real believer in uh, you know, local news and the value that a paper has to the community in bringing people together. Uh, and that's what I look to do on our papers on a regular basis. Uh, as you can tell from the paper itself, uh, I still get involved in writing a fair number of the stories, taking the photographs. I mean, you are the quintessential, I mean, I, and, and you and I don't really know each other very well, but I, I, I've watched you from, from afar in the sense that you are, you are the equivalent of that old radio station guy that, that was the general manager, was on the air, um, sold time, fixed the transmitter. Uh, right. you, are right. the, you are the print version of that. You, you've kept your hand in this, and you are, you are well respected in terms of the news that you generate in the communities that you well cover. I mean, you're a walking encyclopedia for that stuff, right? Yes. Uh, Don't be modest about it. <laughs> that, that's that's kind of where your rep is. I would say that you know our feet are firmly planted in the community, and uh, that's what you know uh, where we grow from. That's those are the people we want to listen to. And those are the stories we want to tell. And if you look through our publications, that's what you'll see. Uh, it's not wire copy. It's not something generated somewhere else just to fill space. Uh, these papers uh, are really, you know, the, the news, the community news, the, the sort of Bible for the community. Well, you know, I often talk about my friend Tom Ward is, the guy with the Valley Breeze, who's the, the, the oh, Bible, the, the Bible of Northern Rhode Island. Yes, um, he's done a great job. He has done a great job. But you're you're doing the same thing in 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 the mid and in, in, in really can we say is it the Kent County South County marketplace for the most part? Well, Johnston yes. and yeah. I mean so you're you're Cranston, getting a little, Johnston, Central Rhode Island, so right. to speak. Uh, you find reassurance in the notion that people crave that local news? Crave it. Uh, or do they? I, Anymore. I, you know, I'm when you afraid hear, to get the answer. Do they not? <laughs> when you hear the statistics, uh, and I know you had Ron Makeley on uh, earlier. Yeah, yesterday's and, show, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we happened to cross paths uh, in the studio and we're talking about it. People know we taped the Friday show on Thursday, so yes, that's good. So yes. that, <laughs> we're letting a cat out of the bag. Right. Uh, and we were talking about how much time people spend on Facebook, uh, and the statistic he had is, you know, it's mind-boggling that, you know, more than an hour a day people are spending on their devices looking on Facebook. Uh, how long does it take you to read the paper? Not that long. And when you think about what you, uh, obviously, the, all the time, going into putting this together is, you know, hours and hours, and yet you can, you know, breeze through it, hopefully, in, you know, 45 minutes or something like this and catch up on what's going on. All right, so you're, you're, you're actually doing a little bit of a sell on the audience about uh, time usage. So maybe my, right. maybe, maybe, maybe my assumption was incorrect. Are you, are you feeling that people are still interested in, in that local news? Most definitely, but they're but they're relying on social media for for the transmission of it too much. It seems to me, uh, in bits and pieces, and who knows what's real and and what's fabricated. I'm not going to use the term fake because I just think that's gotten out of control. Right. Um, I think your take right. on that is what? Yeah, I think you're right. That they're, they're looking at sort of snippets and they say I've got the story because I've read, you know, just sort of the headline that the students at, uh, for example, at Pilgrim are going to be doing a demonstration on March 14th. And, uh, but Off they, the Parkland thing. Right. <clears throat> right. But do they know that the kids at Tollgate are going to be doing it? And who are the kids that are organizing it? Uh, 
And then when they read the story in the paper here, they're going to find that out. They're going to, oh, this is my neighbor, uh, son or daughter that is involved with this. This is what they plan to do. You know, what's the take of the administration? Are they going to, you know, uh, uh, suspend some of these kids for walking out of class? What's their take on this demonstration? Mm -hmm. So, what is the take, by the way? Uh, the take on Warwick is therefore the teachers are going to go with the kids. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think this is a unique demonstration. This, yes. this one, I agree. this one is a national movement as opposed to, you know, teacher unions and kids getting together, running out over some contract negotiation or something along that right. line. Uh, when we come back, we'll meet uh, the new partner and we'll talk about the business um, because that's a different kind of business, sort of. Stay with us. There's the reminder, which is now acquired by the Warwick Beacon, kind of a partnership there. And um, I'm still reading the paper. But John just pointed out something here that, that, that is really interesting. We're going to meet our guest here in a second. Well, let me say hello. It's awful rude not to say hello first. Hello. Peter Stevens is the co-publisher of The Reminder. Nice to have you. Thank you. Um, but you were, we were just shooting the breeze, looking at the paper, and he's saying, you don't see this in the journal. And you're right. This gentleman from North Kingstown writes a whole essay on gun safety, gun violence. You can spread it out a little bit in your paper, correct? That's right. You know, a little That's bit right. of room to run. Yeah. Your subscriptions are 7,000? Uh, right, 7,000 circulation. It's paid circulation. Meaning? The people are buying the paper. It's, yeah, you get that? Yeah. You're buying the paper. Uh, the, the different <laughs> concept. Your paper is not a buy paper. That's correct. No, and, and your model is, I don't know, it's it's a really smart model. People Thank love you. the stuff that, that comes up in a reminder. You know, they want... They're almost more in tune with the advertising and the yard sales than they are oh, with yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the battles over major issues. How long have you had The Reminder now? Uh, well, I've worked at The Reminder since the day it started. My mom and dad started it on the kitchen table, literally on the kitchen table. My sister and I worked there collating, stapling, uh, sticking stamps on it like this. Yeah, you gotta get, Jess, we got to get this shot. I don't know if it's going to be clumsy, but can I, can, I, can I put this here somewhere? I don't know if you can see this. See if we can shoot this. Do I can put it over here. Uh, yeah. Pull it under me. Can somebody yell to me whether this is good <laughs> enough? Yes. Are we going to get this shot? Anyway, it, it, it might. If you have a 72-inch screen, you might be able to see this. But this is. And there we go. That's a little bit better. Ah, there we go. This is what. Uh, Volume one, number two. This is the. Wow. From. Fifty-two. Nineteen fifty-two. The old typing. The whole thing. Yep. Lawnmower and wash machine sales and service ads. What did that ad cost? Like a little ad like that? Maybe five bucks back then. Five bucks for what? A, a week or? Oh yeah, it's, it's weekly. weekly. It's a weekly. Right. But five dollars to put that ad in there. Yeah. It's amazing. This is great stuff. All Thank good you. in yellow. Yeah. Uh, but you've grown that, that that thing. I mean, you've you've got some significant distribution that has been acquired here by the work. Yes, Beatty, correct. Uh, about twenty eight thousand total circulation every week. Twenty four thousand in the mail. So the mission statement of uh, what what do we call your kind of newspaper? A shopper. A, a shopper. Or a penny saver. Or a penny saver. What 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 is the mission statement of that kind of a publication these days? Basically, to serve the the local advertisers and the local uh, readers. Uh, the advertisers have a place to put in their uh, ground beef on sale this week only. Right. Uh, the readers get to look at it and say, oh, I can go there and buy ground beef this week. But you haven't had the editorial interest or pressure? Um, neither, because we've never pretended to be a newspaper. Right. So, John, when, you, when, you, when you're putting your paper together, you've had, you've had the hybrid of having to be compelling of having to be repertorial, having to be responsible in covering the news, which is controversial in and of itself. You don't have to be Dan York spouting you know, opinions on the radio and TV to be viewed as controversial, yet you got to be able to generate the revenue. So that balance is different than this balance. Very different. Right? Yes. So when you acquire this publication, what's the model now? What, what, what are you guys brainstorming together? That's, that's a very good question. We haven't quite figured that out. <laughs> 
<laughs> Still got the training wheels on. <laughs> Let's just do it and figure it out later. No, well, well, instinctively, you're latching on to a significant subscription and or distribution and or interest list. I mean, mm -hmm. how many people are reading your paper on a weekly basis? Uh, hopefully all of the 24,000 that get it in the mail. Right. But it's, it's free distribution. So whether they want it or not, they get it. Okay. And so... So we're going to leave it as certainly as a free distribution. As you know, Tom Ward, you were talking about him earlier. Yeah, the Valley Breeze. Those publications are free distribution papers as well. Yes. And so it's a hybrid between, you know, a shopper and a subscriber pay for a publication. Uh, and what he isn't doing that Peter has been doing is he wasn't mailing that to those people. Right. That's a very expensive proposition. Right. So you, you, you learn to find it at the, at the, at the drop spots, mm -hmm. which are plentiful in each of the towns. Mm -hmm. These are all unique models, aren't they? Everyone's right. got a little bit of a different way to do the business on the print side. Right. So you ask the question, what's the future yeah. for the reminder? And it may be going a little bit toward the news side, so you've created a publication that people say, you know, I don't get in my mailbox any longer, but I know where to find it at Rock's Market, and I'm going to go there to get it. And that's maybe the direction we go, but we don't see that doing it, you know, doing that tomorrow. Just got to kind of play it by ear. Right. Well, what the heck? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's right. I mean, they acquired you. I'm sure they made you whole. You're good. You're, you're staying on. Not for no. much longer. For how long? Uh, depends on John. Uh, I'm going to twist his this, arm. Yeah. This, was, this <laughs> seems to be a very compatible transaction. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And while I have the chance, I want to say thank you to John for uh, being there to take uh, responsibility for the reminder. My sister and I who own it uh, or owned it um, were looking for a way to transition. And so you put out a little bit of the smoke uh, on yeah. this whole thing? Yeah, John and I had spoken over yeah. the years, and he basically said, if you're ever interested in selling, uh, call me. Yeah. So I did. He yeah. also talked to Tom Ward, by the way. So. Yeah. yeah, and a few others and along few the others, way. So. But John has made uh, the transaction uh, very comfortable and very seamless. The and geographical reach of the reminder, is it larger than, than the beacon? Yes, because this is a state, this is kind of a statewide paper. Well, this is Coventry, West Warwick, West Greenwich, East uh, uh, Forster, uh, those areas. Okay. Uh, a large footprint and maybe larger than it ever needed to be or, or wanted to be, but it just kind of grew it, over the years. It grew, did it grow past you a little bit, or it has to do with your energy level, right? Well, it has to do with uh, readership, and uh, it's the dollars. If we were much bigger, the ads would be more expensive, and the advertisers would go, whoa, can't do that. Um, the ideal size for a paper like this nationwide is about 10,000 circulation. Hmm. Ours is a little top-heavy, but it's, it is what it is, and it works for the advertisers, it works for the readers, it works for us as owners, so we kept going with right. it. So with this merger, I'm sure both these gentlemen are trying to figure out what the future is for this business in general. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us. Great. I don't see the readers carrying a sustaining an interest in this. All right, we're back here with uh, these fine, is it fair to say veteran? Ve veteran publishers, yeah, yeah, uh, John good. Howell, publisher of the uh, the Beacon Communications, and Peter Stevens, the reminder. These guys have partnered up. Um, you know, you're, it, it really is amazing how how uh, segments of the population still absolutely can't wait to read ads. They like to read ads. Yes, they do. Uh, those of us Thank in the you. television and the radio business <laughs> try to explain to everybody that. Oh, there's not enough versatility in those ads. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is, there is there is a benefit on every platform and every level. And one of the great things about the newspaper is that it, it stays there. Mm -hmm. But then again, you're printing less because you got to be online. How big is your online operation right now, editorially? Yeah, we have, in the case of the Beacon only, somewhere around uh, fourteen thousand unique viewers a week. How are you doing in terms of monetizing the digital side? 
terribly. <laughs> That's all I can say. Well, I, mean, just, and I, say I appreciate your candor. It's, it's the big thing the newspaper business had the difficulty with. They gave away the content, right. made it free, then all of a sudden went, oh man, we can't, we, we're having trouble monetizing it because people don't want to read ads online. And then they start firewalling and charging and they find out, well, you know what, maybe we're not so hot because people don't want to pay for it because you already gave it to them for free. Um, so it's hard. It is. Mm -hmm. It's hard. But yeah. if you don't have it, they forget to pick it up now. Well, you can use the, you know, the online stuff as a way to sort of tease, if you will, for the paper. But people want to get the story, you know, in... Now. Yeah. 14 Are you words. finding that you're able to editorially keep up online the way you want to? I think we could certainly do a better job than we're doing right now. Hmm. Uh, I think our website, in terms of beacons, you know... It's good. Little, it's easy to read. Easy it's easy to, to read. It's clean. A little clunky. Yeah. We should have some more video and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an and investment. And maybe a firewall makes sense. Is there an online application to what the reminder has been doing? Yes. We, do, we digitize every reminder every week. It's online. You can go online and read it just like you would. Are you finding that people are going online to see it, or do they want to touch it and pick it up? They want to touch it. They want to pick it up. And as John and I had, were talking earlier about it, I think one of the unique things about the reminder is the zone that we cover, the people who are interested in it, get it every week in their mailbox. Mm -hmm. So the digitized version is for those outside of the area that can't get it in the mail. Sure. Or uh, for those that they're out and about and they can get it on their cell phone. But at some point, as you you know, ride into the sunset with your retirement from this <laughs> transaction, John's got to figure out whether or not he wants to keep sending it in the mail. And so you're going to have yes. to figure that transition out between getting it online, expectations, there'll be a transition, a warning period, I'm sure, all of that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a finesse project right. for you. Mm -hmm. But you've figured out how to move in this business all these years. You've, well, you'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some of the features that uh, Peter's got on the site right now I think are really desirable. You know, it's uh, you can flip through it as if you were looking at the, the paper itself. And if you click on an ad, then you automatically can be tied into, you know, the website of the advertiser. So right. there's a benefit for the advertiser. So in 30 seconds or less, fill in the blank, the future of the newspaper business is? I'd say print. And I'd say local, 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 local. So you're not, you're not giving up on this sucker. I'm not giving up on that, and I absolutely agree with Peter. It's local. And it's got to be about what's happening in your own backyard. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank on, you on, on all the success, and it's great to mingle with you guys and stay in touch with what you're doing. Um, you know, I I think the newspaper business is really important to save. So keep buying the beacon. Keep <laughs> buying from the reminder. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Good. Thanks. Good to see you. Uh, final word when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back in. Uh, I, again, really, the newspaper business is something that we need to sustain uh, on all levels. And, you know, John made a good point. John Hell made a good point. You know, why don't you spend 15 minutes less on your Facebook, you know, gossiping about, and by the way, not for nothing, but not everybody needs to see your kid. Okay. You know, in the old days, you picked up the phone and you told them something was going on. You know, you, you showed them a real picture. And, and most times, everyone went, oh, yeah, that's very nice. Well, that's what they're doing with Facebook, too, you know. Anyway, uh, we got March Madness going crazy next week, so that'll infiltrate a lot of our thought process with both PC and URI. The weekend will tell the story as to where they go, and we'll step into that and check up with the news of the day, of course. Thanks for watching. See you on the Radio 3 on Monday on WPRO. Bye.